All right. Good morning, everybody. Who's on the line this morning, Cameron? Kevin Allen. Kevin Allen. Is that, who is that? New customer. New customer. Deep drop? Yes. Okay. All right, let's swap it over. Thank you, Cameron. All right. You're on with Captain Richie this morning. Who am I speaking to? Hey, Captain Richie. This is Kevin Allen. How are you? Hey, hey, what's up, man? I just wanted to make sure I had the right guy here because, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know about this guy. I got with the phones here. He, these buttons are flashing and everything's happening. So, uh, are you out on the water today? Are you going or what's up? What's going on? Where are you at? I'm out of Port Everglades, Florida. Sweet, sweet. You are in the deep drop capital of the world, right there, my friend. Yes, sir. Are you, are you currently doing that out of PE uh, or? Are you going with friends? Have you been deep dropping at all? What do you what What do you know about it? What have you done? I've, I've done a little research, you know, reading through forums and things like that. Um, I've been a couple times with some buddies of mine, um, but uh, looking to learn more, of course. So uh, see where where that leads me. Yeah. Have you have? I, I think uh, I think Dana told me that you were one of the customers that calls or that has called that already purchased some deep drop spots. Is that correct? Yes, I have. So let me look. So you port you purchased uh, West Palm Beach to Fort Lauderdale. That's the right spot. Um, okay. So when you've been out, what have you guys? What have you been into? And uh, how deep were you guys fishing? Well, uh, usually uh, right now, if I'm on my own, I go out to you know the, the third reef and do some past reef fishing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm I'm looking to get into you know over you know 800 foot and then uh, possibly deep dropping for swords and things like that so i'd like to learn a little more yeah yeah well you bought you bought the right spots for that and i know you've seen uh dana says that you know because she kind of pre-screens this stuff but uh i, I know that know that you've seen our boats out there uh, working those areas and um i haven't seen you out there because I, I think i know you have a 21 mako if i'm not mistaken that i've seen you on the third reef before uh chum bottom fishing yeah. is that not you Two hundred Yamaha, that's you. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I've seen I've seen you fishing. You fish a lot, man. Yeah, I try to get out every chance I get. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you a lot in the afternoon, so I'm, I'm guessing you're going after work. Correct. Yeah, that's cool, man. So the times you've been out bottom fishing, I I wouldn't have known probably who you were. I only know you by your boat anyway, um, but. The boat you were fishing on, what what were you guys catching when you did go deep dropping? Uh, we we went in the, we got into a couple tiles here and there, uh, mm -hmm. some you know black belly rose fish. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to just like to learn some more and, and see what works better for other anglers. I'm not going to ask you who you're with, who you were with, but the guys you were with, did they seem to be knowledgeable, or were they just trying to kind of wing it and learn themselves? It was, it was definitely, you know, winging it and learning it. Uh, you know, they're the same type of guys. But, you know, they look at the forums and read and uh, just try out new techniques and things like that. Yep, and, and you can, you can. You can get a good a good idea of what to do. But as you've noticed, man, there's a lot more to it than that. Yes, there is. It's not right. I mean, knowing bottom fishing, that's, that is good, though, because you know, you, know, you know what to look at on the sonar. Um, but as far as actually going and do it and it's it's almost an art form i in, in my opinion yeah that's what i'm i'm learning <laughs> yeah it's a and and, I, and you can have that you've, you've, you've bought the right spots and the spots are good and and the way we've set them up is there a lot of them are half a mile to a mile apart so you can do what what we call spot bouncing and uh, so you can cover a lot of ground, and a lot of them we've set up. If you'll if you'll pull up that Google Earth file at some point and look, which you probably already have, you'll notice uh, that the spots you can drift from south to you know because you'll be coming, you always be drifting north, of course. And uh, those right. spots are some of them you can drift dot to dot basically, and cover some good good bottom the way we've tried to set it up. So you'll you'll notice that in between spots, uh, the way we have it set up. You know, keeping in mind that you're going to be drifting north the whole time, that that you'll hit other bottom. We've tried to we've tried to do that on a lot of the spots too. So you'll notice that. 
Um, but yeah, it definitely looks like a good setup. Yeah, it, it is. It really is. A lot of time's gone into it, and it's a little different than last year's and uh, 2016 spots as well, because obviously it's now public, and it wasn't, the first of all. But we've also switched up the spots, so um, you'll you'll enjoy those. But so one of your questions, I think, was uh, the types of no one you wanted to know exactly what types of structure that there is and what it means, correct? In deep water. That's right. Okay. Well, you you fish ledges in there if you fish the second or third reef. Um, you're mainly fishing structure ledges. That's what you're doing. So this is this is a little bit different than that because number one there is a lot of ledges but there's probably not as many as where you're fishing because those things uh and, and especially the third reef <clears throat> excuse me those those uh those ledges are just hundreds of them um the difference will be in the ledges is probably the height of them because some of this stuff you'll find 20 30 foot ledges that we have or more and uh and on these bigger ledges like that the current's running north with the stream right and then behind those ledges you get a whirlpool effect and uh sometimes there's holes behind those and and what you what the reason i want you to know that is because there's two reasons coming up to that ledge a lot of times and what what i'd like you to do when you do start fishing them and uh i hear you're upgrading your boat too uh what what are you looking at getting how big are, how big of a boat I'm, I'm looking to move up to a 27 possibly yeah, you know, old Lou Rambo used to be in Palm Beach. There, he makes a good a good boat. And if you want to see any Rambos, if you haven't seen them uh, around Stewart, the the goggle eye uh, bait guys, they they run a lot of Rambos. Have you seen Rambos before? Yeah, I've seen those. I've, I've bought some bait from those guys out there. They look like a good setup. Yeah, they sure. are. Yeah, definitely, they definitely are. I mean, it's not a. I wouldn't say it's a blue water boat by any means, but um, I don't know what your price range is, but for a twenty seven foot boat uh new or used if you can find a used one i don't i don't know that you're gonna find a better setup for that and i'll tell you why it's because i know some guys uh in southeast georgia and northeast florida that have set those boats up for charters and one guy has set it up for deep drop fishing so it's easy to set up and where you have to fish from pe is not far to where you're going to fish so that might be a good option for you just keep it in mind i will I appreciate the uh, advice on that too. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people are asking questions about Rambos, and I'll tell you why. It's because everything else is two hundred grand, and uh, so, yeah, they are. You know, or, or 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 you may buy a piece of junk for uh, for fifty that's twenty seven or thirty one foot, and it's uh, you're gonna just battle problems. And out there is a place you don't want to have problems. So yeah, you are correct in that. Yes, sir, buddy. But back to the thing, uh, the ledges when they get that a lot, not everyone. But some of those ledges, you'll notice, it'll be, it'll say rollback. Maybe in the comments, it'll say ledge with a rollback or a rollback ledge with hole. And that's those spots. But behind that, these are the better spots because on many of those spots, that hole back there, not only does it hold luminescence types of, uh, of bottom of the food chain creatures like squid, of course, mainly squid. But as that sand behind that just pounds and pounds and pounds over to thousands of years, you get a silt hole, is what we call it, and around around the edges of that hole, and sometimes into the into the to the uh, to the cone entrance of that hole, is where those golden tiles and uh, blue lines too. But sometimes those goldens will pile up out of that sand and eat a bait. So that's the kind of places. And if you know, like most depth finders, not all of them. If you're running a, are you running a Garmin or what are you running? Yeah, I run a Garmin 840. Yeah, that's Garmin Land down there, buddy. Is right now, if you if you have a Garmin, more than likely the yellowish green is going to be soft bottom. So, have you noticed that on your machine? I have. Okay. Yeah, definitely. The, the softer markings tend to be the lighter colors. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and then, what is your machine showing as harder bottom? Since you fish ledges, you know what color that is, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting like a red and orange colors or, or my harder bottom. Yeah, that's right. Well, on these ledges, when you see that greenish, yellowish, or just, just green, that's usually, a lot of times, that's that can be mud or super, super soft silt sand with a mud mix. And tiles will get into that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, they, they'll, they'll burrow down in that, and they'll pile up out of it to eat a bait. And you'll see that coming up to the ledges a lot of times and behind those silt holes I was telling you about. 
Okay, but what's on the ledge? Why, why am I, why am I avoiding the ledge? I'm not. So, come, come as you come on the ledge, you start seeing foot by foot the depths getting shallower, right? And then uh, you start seeing oranges. Well, when you get into the oranges, it's starting to get harder bottom, and then into the red, of course. You can pretty much count out tiles. So I'll fish this thing a bunch of different ways. I'm gonna drift it with squid, you know, multiple times after I've checked it out and checked my drift and everything. You know, I'll spend five minutes or more just checking it and drifting it and watching it so I can dial my mind into that one ledge. And uh, after that, you start hitting the red stuff and you're catching, say you catch rose bellies, which you will. I'm sorry, black bellies and uh, rose fish and, and whatever variety you catch. Use some squid first, okay? And then, uh, as you start, you know, getting into 8 and 10 drifts, if you've kind of figured out, okay, this looks like this is all that's here, then that's when you need to have put up little 1 and 2 and 3 pound bullet bonita. And uh, you can put yeah, those up. Yeah, things are everywhere down there, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are. Anywhere you want to go, man, spring and summer, you, you know, you know how it is. You can just drag a spoon through there or whatever you want, a little live baits and catch them up. And uh, they're a lot of fun to catch too. So yes, they are. That is a deadly bait, and a lot of people say that's too big to drop on a deep drop rig. And it's it's really not though, because let me tell you, as you come up that ledge, here's what you got. So you go from tough fish possibilities, you know, sometimes, and as you come up on that orangish red, when it starts getting red and climbing, that's barrel fish land, and it's also queen snapper property and then as you go up the ledge all the way to the top of the ledge on the mound on the tip of it we call it as you get to the tip of the the ledge uh, those things are still all a possibility and now as you go down the back of that ledge those possibilities are increasing for all those species barrel fish snowies uh, possibly a yellow edge or wreck fish and there's even some species it's hard to pronounce that you might catch behind that ledge as you uh, as you go down the side, uh, the back side of it on the uh, north side, yes, the north side of it, because you'll be coming from the south, obviously. So that's kind of a ledge layout that we call a rollback with a hole or a rollback ledge. The other things are uh, divots, which is an inverted uh, inverted relief we call it, or uh, an in op relief, and it looks like a pinnacle jumped up out of that sand or out of that rock and landed next to it because what's weird is most times where you see a divot not far as a pinnacle that looked like it matched that hole so uh, in those divot holes we call them uh, that's the queens love holes queen snapper do so keep in mind that as you're going um, yeah that's a beautiful fish right there oh my god is it ever and uh, I want to tell you remind me to tell you about hooks because I'll get carried away just, I'll get excited about this stuff so Remind me to tell you about the hooks and the rigs for this. Don't let me forget in the weights, but the holes oh, are right. uh, okay. The, the holes are a good spot uh, to try queens, and uh, also tiles around the the round around the edge of that. They won't normally be in the hole, uh, but a lot of times there's silt and mud around the edge of that hole. So you, you got to really depend on your equipment and know how to read it. Right on. Let's see what else we haven't covered. Um, pinnacles themselves. Um, some people call them sea mounts, but I, cause sea mounts I consider to be a little bigger than that. But they can be considered like a you know a mini mound, I guess. And a few of them are labeled as mini mounds, I think. But that's going to be a pinnacle, and you, you can fish all over that and just watch your bottom machine and watch the you know what the bottom looks like as far as uh, you know what it's made out of, and, and fish it accordingly. That's what we've already talked about. And then um, let's see what else we right. haven't covered. Ditches. Okay, ditches, uh, especially an east-west running ditch, you got to be careful around this because it's literally a ditch cut into the to the earth, you know, <laughs> into the the volcanic bottom or limestone bottom, whatever it may be at that time, or at that uh, spot. And uh, a lot of times it'll drop off 30 feet down in that ditch or more. But as you cross that ditch and you learn the feel of, of how everything looks and how it feels, those areas are covered. Lots of times, the, the, number one with the sea bass of the ocean uh, which is the the rose fish the black belly lots of lots of black bellies will be around the edge of that before it drops down into that hole and uh, hovering over that hole as you go across it because a lot of times that ditch can be you know quite wide before it hits the other side and then that's where 
you might pull up something that uh that you ain't never caught you know what i mean like a big big grouper uh high possibility of of several types no telling a wreck fish uh, lots of lots of big stuff are down in them, them ditches like there's stuff down in there no telling may not identified yet you know it's scary looking down in there and, yeah. a, and a depth finder can can see in there the sonar sees in there pretty good but not you just never know you know what i'm saying like you never know what's in those ditches so yeah that's what i love about modern fishing you never know what's on the line until you get it up no you don't and, and more than likely over that if you, you know squid you, you know black bellies but what I'd like you to do, and everybody that's listening, when you cross those ditches like that, that's where you got to put those little bonitas up. You got to put them up, and put them in your freezer, and when you catch them, you got to keep them right. Uh, designate a cooler just for that, and uh, get you some of that. I mean, if you want to go the cheap way, to get them kind of halfway frozen, you know, a lot of commercial guys do this. Just go buy some of that um, those salt pellets for you know water softener. It's what it's five bucks a bag for like, I don't know, it's a little old bag and it's heavy. But you just sprinkle a few of those on your ice, then hit it with some salt water, and whatever goes in that mix, buddy, it's going to be fresh. And then you can put it straight in the freezer from there. So in other words, they work way later if you put them upright. Bonita do. Um, right. And then when you you take that bullet Bonita, and uh, they're going to be dead by the time you use them, whether you use them fresh or not. You're not going to make that run from the, from the second or third reef out there uh, with live Bonita more than likely anyway. So... Uh, take cut the fins off all of them, the peg fins the dorsals and cut off the tail so he don't spin so bad and uh, You just no telling man what you're gonna pull up over those ditches and on the back sides of those ledges I was telling you there's just no telling so you have to try it both ways and some people have fished squid uh, On some nine or ten alt hooks and on the same rig they may have two at the bottom of that rig or at the top that have uh, 14 alt hooks on it that uh you know to hold those bullet bonita baits so they can fish both right. ways you know the squid and the bullets right mm-hmm. better options that's it on one liter now i won't typically do that i'll try it i'll try it with squid like i said you know six or eight drifts whatever depends on what i'm catching maybe less maybe more drifts and then i'm gonna switch over to dropping a whole bonita or that's not you know the be all end all of, of uh, baits but it's a damn good one you can use barracuda chunks. I know you already probably know that, but that's a that's always an option for any of this stuff as opposed to squid. But I will tell you that golden tilefish like squid, like big time. So that's going to be your main bait for those. But everything else, pretty much, you can you can use barracuda chunks. And again, for the bigger fish, the bullet bonita. All right, uh, we'll talk about weight. That's probably a, a question you'll have. Um, yeah. Yeah, because those things get expensive and and uh, you lose them on some of those, those structure, you know, those ledges and stuff. Uh, That's so correct. I don't know if you got any insight on that. I do. I do. And as you know, it's expensive to keep buying those rigs at, at, at 15, 20 bucks, 25 bucks a piece. Um, it's, that's expensive to do every time you go because you need more than two or three, you know, because you never know. You might drift three times and accidentally break off every drift and you get how much is that? That's $60 in rigs. Um, so if you buy all the parts and pieces you need, so just, you just go, go go ahead and go buy a five hook rig and look at how it's built and, and buy those parts from the guy at the store there, you know, if you need to do that. A lot of people just totally are going to buy them pre-made no matter what, because most people are in a hurry, man. They don't have much time and they want to go have some fun. Uh, but, right. but if you have the time, dissect one and get the parts needed and talk to your guy at the counter there at your local tackle store and get get what you need all right and uh what have we not covered uh hooks i guess we could cover um there's a company uh, i don't know if you've heard of it they're they're a norwegian company in norway but i found out the norway is slash usa now uh, have you ever heard of vanguard wolf i've heard of them and uh, i believe they were in the commercial market um but uh, i'd like to see them you know if uh like you said, if they're coming to the U.S., that'd be great. Yeah, it would. Because what you probably also noticed, if you've heard of it, you probably only heard that from a guide uh, or heard rumor of that, that a guide has that stuff. And another thing is you can't get it. We can start with that. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, these guys, I, I know one of the guys that's a rep for that company, and he sends his orders for the guides in by fax machine. So 
Oh, wow. Does get the stone age. Oh, old school, yeah, absolutely. And they only sell below surface tackle. Like bottom fishing tackle is what they specialize in most of all. And most recently, some guys over on the Gulf Coast between Sarasota and uh, Tampa and Tarpon Springs area, they have talked those guys into selling a tarpon hook that they prefer. And then a couple of more guys got in on it, and it not only was these J-hooks that they that they were selling, they came up with a couple of uh, circle hooks that, that worked real well working with these guides. And that's when they decided to start going a little more uh, outward and being public with their tackle. So we will definitely link that when we find out what's going on. We heard there's a website being built by this rep that they will offer it publicly now. I don't know if you'll need a password to get on the site or I, I don't know. But uh, the name of the company is Vanguard Wolf, you know, as you've heard. So people listening, we will post that on flfishingspots.com, not only in the main section of the site, but it's uh, especially in the deep drop part. We'll link that with the logo. And uh, real quick on weights, uh, Kevin, the most of the time, as you, if you fish with a couple guys, you know you're going, you're going to at least fish five or six, seven pounds most of the time because the current runs so hard there. Yeah, it does, man. It rips. It does, man. Especially on a moon, it really gets tilted over and and, uh, and hauls ass. It's very hard to fish. You're in a complicated area to fish. To be honest with you, you know, uh, for uh, for deep dropping, it's complicated. It's because the tide runs so damn hard. You're gonna have to learn the feel of of to keep the boat pointed south in gear, and and just what works best for you to try and stay on the spot as long as you can without getting twisted up and turned around and running over your lines. So right. it just takes a little time. And the guys that are real good at it, they'll fish three or four, you know, three or four lines, three or four rods. In uh but the bait for the for the for the uh for the weights, you know they're expensive. So uh what what you can do is use uh and even Bouncer Smith does, you can use red bricks, they weigh about four, four and a half pounds a piece. Solid red bricks. And get you some wire ties with a little eye on it so you can so you can uh, floss it off to your leader. Um, so that that'll work too. Idea. Yeah, it is. It really is. And it's like, well, man, this guy's crazy bricks, really. Well, man, the the one of the best IGFA guys in history. You know, Bouncer Smith uses bricks um, because he wants a breakaway, so he don't want to spend sixty five dollars. And they use fifteen pounds. You know, he's in two thousand feet where he sword fishes, and uh, he needs a breakaway. He's not going to lose leads. He just, I mean, it doesn't make sense. And they. No, it sure doesn't. Uh, uh and they're gonna make i mean he's caught three or four fish in a day so he's lost what 275 250 dollars in weights you can't you can't do that so no. the option is red bricks from the hardware store and uh you can take a just buy a cheap duffel bag and line it with with the the postal shipping you know the bubble wrap the one inch bubble wrap and that way it won't beat your boat up and uh you can stuff them somewhere in case you need them and i know that's crazy but and and the wire ties don't forget. But you, yeah, like why would you not do that if it's running current like that and you're getting hung, tearing up rigs, breaking stuff off? Why not use a brick? Yeah, that's right. Save money where you can. Absolutely, man. Nothing wrong with you. It looks stupid, but it works. So there's that. And uh, Vanguard Wolf also, uh, interestingly, and I'm just speculating here on if this will be the way it is. But they're also, one of their subsidiary companies somehow is into uh, lead and iron recycling. So if I'm thinking right, I would imagine they're going to start offering their lead, um, deep drop leads, if I had to guess. And if they're in the recycling business, I'm speculating again, hopefully that might be a little cheaper than what's out there. You know, maybe it is. We'll see. So. Yeah, that, that'd be real nice, man, because those things... Man, you lose, you know, 10-pound weight, $30, $40, I mean, that's hard to swallow right there. Yeah, it is, which is back to the bricks. No matter who you buy the, the lead from, I guess, is the bricks is the backup plan. Um, it is for us. I mean, that's that's what we do. But um, anyway, what did you have any other questions or have we covered it or what else do you, what did I miss? Oh, reels, I guess. Do you have a, a preference, the electric reels? Well, I've uh, I've been looking into those Daiwa Tanacons because those seem to be uh, you know price point wise they're they're a great price and uh, they look like they hold up. I've watched some videos and stuff. Uh, a lot of Australian guys use those, 
Mm. And uh, it seems like an interesting reel. I might get into those. Yeah, I don't blame you. And you're talking to somebody that's pretty biased and uh, totally for Daiwa, 100%. They introduced one of the, the that Daiwa Tanacom 1000 was one of the first reels that got into a budget that, um, you know, middle class fishermen can afford. Uh, they, they're the first people that I ever saw with a $500 reel that you could take and do almost anything in, uh, in deep water with. So, and it's got plenty of drag too. So I don't blame you for, for doing that. And I'll tell you what I own personally. We have several 1000s obviously. And, and mistakenly, when Tanacoms were first starting to get popular, I, I paid too much for mine. But as prices came down, I was able to buy several for what one of them used to cost. And it's the same. The only thing is it doesn't have the bling as the old ones did. And you can even still get those, I think. But it has, you know, fancy stickers. And it's some of them are blue with the gold spool and a nice billet handle. And uh, well, that, all that costs money for them to put on the reel. Uh, right. But they had, to, I guess that was a selling point for them. But now the reel, you can order it for five or six hundred dollars. It's basic black mat. Uh, there's really not, there's not a lot of bling to it. It's all black. It's got a gold, you know, aluminum spool, and that's it. Um, but let me tell you, it's the same motor they always used, and it's badass. And uh, that thing will vertical jig for you. It'll do, it'll just straight reel, whatever you want to do that computer in that thing you can set up to do and uh, so I have several of those uh, the count would probably reach around six I guess at this point but what we've also used are the 600s and uh, you likely have to order that from Japan uh, unless your local tackle dealer can get it uh, and for those reels I highly suggest the local tackle dealer to get those okay All right. and I'll tell you why yeah, go ahead I'm sorry uh, I was just gonna say you know there's a those big crystals and things, those things are so cumbersome, you know, that's why, uh, another reason that I was interested in those Tanacoms, because it's just, they're sleek and, and, and not cumbersome, and uh, they just, they work well on the boat, it looked like, you know, as far as, uh, compared to those, those bigger uh, electric reels, you know, with the mm -hmm. giant starter on the side. Yeah, I totally agree. Now the, the Some of those hooker setups with internationals are pretty compact, but you know what? That's five grand, man. So I can buy a whole bunch of Tanacons for five thousand dollars. Yeah. With rods. Yeah. And um, you, the, also, there's there's another. I mean, I can't say that a Shimano Beastmaster isn't isn't a good electric reel because it is, but I think it's just overpriced, like by far overpriced um, for something that just because it says Shimano on it. You know, Dial is a good product as well, and uh, I just can't see spending a thousand compared to 500 for something that I, I just can't see it it's not it's not that much of a better reel so and, yeah, and, I agree. And, and you know another thing like you said with the crystals and uh, LMPs and stuff like that I do like those reels and love all their products I really do because back in the day that's that's all we had uh, for the most part unless you hook you know we started out commercial fishing it wasn't uncommon to see guys have a setup where they've hooked a Ford starter up to a, a pin 9 on you know it wasn't uncommon to see that. And uh, mm -hmm. and then from then they turned into what was called Electromates. And the Penn Senators were the popular setup with that. So, And even back then that stuff was expensive for the day. But uh, I want to be able to, to turn the reel. So I don't want a big box reel we call them. I, wa I want to be able to manual crank the reel in case something happens to the reel. Um, right. Or if I just want to fight the fish. I can pick it up, turn off the electricity to it with the lever. And, uh, and start reeling at any like at any time so I think there's some confusion over it's called an assist reel it's a uh, electric assist it is an electric reel and you can reel if you feel like it that's what that is so. all right what have we not covered uh, Oh, the line uh, obviously 65 pound they make something called Daiwa J braid this suggested for those reels uh, it's eight strand real smooth uh, it's pretty round. Uh, no, it's not really flat at all. It's very round, actually. It's some of the best line that I've seen. Uh, and I'm, I'm not Shimano, Dial, or whatever. I'm not sponsored by any of those guys. They don't pay me a dime. So those are my choices for for that. And a rod, I like a 5080, um, or even lighter, a 2050. Sometimes depends on if I'm only fishing for black bellies or you know something like that. 
you'll mess up and, and uh, hook a big fish on that though if you're not careful. And you'll have a little bit of a problem on your hands. But a 5080 works great. And uh, some of the guys even use 8120s as an all around. You know, they sword fish with it and and deep drop. So, but that's about it that I can that I can think of. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a million things, and we could go on all day burning up the airtime. But what else do you? Uh, am I missing anything that you need to know at the moment? Uh, one of the other questions I had is, you know, uh, when it comes to this this fishing spots that I, I purchased from y'all, um, is is loading them and, and things like that. Um, just the the simple, as far as uh, loading to the machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty simple. Um, if you haven't done, have you done it yet, or do you need to? You want to know how to do it right quick? I'd like to know how to do it real quick. Yeah. Um. This it's easy, man, because if you, especially with a, with a Garmin or with any of them, just unzip the file, and you gotta you gotta use a Windows computer for most of this stuff. Unfortunately, that's not our fault though. That's that's just the way the GPS uh, companies, it's, the SD cards are so Windows based for the machines, and if you put the SD card into a Mac, unless you know all the, and there's a few tricks to make this still work with a Mac, if you know them, or if you have a what's called a Windows side on a Mac, uh, a lot of the MacBook Pros guys will put a Windows side on it, and supposedly you can do that, but it messes up the format of the card somehow, so once it's inserted into a Mac and been used in a Mac, for any reason, whether it's a copy and paste or photos, whatever, it leaves its uh, it leaves its footprints there. And it seems that the machines don't like it. They a lot of times it'll say no card, cannot read card, data error, different things. So use a Windows computer, get it unzipped, and then uh, don't insert your SD card right away. Get it all unzipped. Get it done. Find your GPS brand copy and paste or excuse me copy the file right click and copy it for your brand stick in the card and when the window comes up select uh, open folder to view files and then a, then a blank window comes up or whatever's on your SD card it needs to be blank um, and then you just right click out in that open space of that window right click and paste the file in and it's ready for your GPS you're done that's it then you go load it in Man, how simple is that? it's simple and then it'll load it just as if you've typed in all 100 of those waypoints, you know, by hand, which nobody wants to do. And that's what it eliminates. And then uh, the Google Earth files, I know you've probably already looked at. One of them has a NOAA map built in, and one of them just a sat view. But either one of those work with mobile devices, and uh, obviously on your computer just using Google Earth. A lot of guys will take the uh, mobile apps that they found GPS apps, certain ones will load those Google Earth files and they navigate with that. It's unbelievable. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's nice right there. It is. And some of these guys somehow figured out how to use the files uh, to navigate past the point of cell phone signal. So I, I'm, I'm not sure every little trick behind that, but either way, it's, it works great and it's pretty cool to look at the spots. You can look at comments. And one thing to know too, the Google Earth files, the, the names of the spots are the same as what's on your G, they'll go on your GPS. So, nice, so I can do the research on it before I go out. That's right. You can do trip planning, um, which a lot of people don't really know what that is, but that's exactly what it is. Before you even launch the boat, you can already check everything out. You don't have to run back into your GPS, you know. You don't have to do that. And that's sweet. Yeah, it is. All right, man. Well, I think we're going to have to take the next caller. Cameron's waving at me. Uh, anything else that you can think of, Kevin, that you that you had to ask? Oh, man, I think you've covered uh, more than enough. Uh, you know, I appreciate all the advice and information. No problem, man. No problem. And we got something for you. I want you to stay on the line. And uh, people out there, if you're listening, you can email fishwithus at gmail.com. If you have any questions, I'm Captain Richie Lott. And we'll see you next time. You guys, uh, fair weather, calm seas, and fish on. <laughs>